we're gonna go through my full 50,000 pounds portfolio in as much detail as I can bear to go through. I'm gonna show you the differences from the last portfolio review that I've bought into and what I've sold out of. Right, and boys and girls, we're going to go through the full portfolio today, or certainly the differences between the last portfolio review, which I'll tag up in the corner. I can never remember which one. Have a look at that burst, have a look at the portfolio, the basis of the portfolio. Come back to this video, I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you the portfolio for sure, so you'll see with complete transparency the portfolio, but we'll go through the, the portfolio in terms of what's changed since last time, what I've bought into, and what I've sold out of and anything I feel like needs to be highlighted to you. But before we get into that, I urge you to press the subscribe button down there so you'll get all the new content coming out that I'll be providing. And I urge you to press the like button there as well because the more likes I get, the more the video is pushed out to people, which is really good uh, for me. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. And uh, if you like the content of the video or you're here already, just go down and press the like button because I'm sure you truly want to deep down. But with all that being said, uh, let's get straight into it because I don't want this to be a really long video. The other one was, was crazy long and we are going to go through quite a big portfolio. So um, let's just get straight into it, straight into the computer and we'll go through up on screen what I've got into out of and a, a general overview of the portfolio. Right, here we are in IG and the portfolio. So just start on this screen because it's nice and easy to show you. 50,580 odd pounds so far. I've been up to 51,000 in the portfolio uh, since I last filmed that, uh, my last video. So we've got a bit of cash to play with, just a little bit in there, just to throw into the next few positions, which will be the EV stocks, as I said. So first of all, I'm gonna take you into the history and we're gonna look at how in IG we get a full history up of what we've been playing up. So if we go custom period, I did my last video on the 18th of October, so we'll just highlight that and that'll bring up the date range there, 18th to today, as this was filmed on the 9th. Set those date ranges, client consideration, which will be the, the ins and outs. And we can download all of these if you've got Excel, which I don't. So if I go into this, it will be easier to show you quickly and we can make heads and tails of it, but it asked me to do a free trial, which I'm not gonna do. So I can't use a lot of the functionality on this, but it gives you a good idea. These are the positions I came, I've came, i been in and out of uh, since the last video, and then we'll have a brief rundown of the portfolio as a whole. I sold out of ASML. It was time to sell out of that. It wasn't paying a huge dividend, very tiny, in fact, like half a percent. It had a little bit of a, a drive upwards, and I felt it was just time to get out of that while it was driving up, and so sold out of that one to re- allocate the capital back into dividend payers. I have also bought, so anything in red here is obviously what I've bought. So I bought uh, more Vanguard, the S&P 500. I always said I'd just drip feed into those. I bought Vanguard International High Dividend Yield ETF. So I've bought into that, just one position in that, I believe that is. One position in each, in fact. We've got the Global X Super Dividend REIT ETF, which is the big high dividend payer, which is more of an income play rather than a growth. I'll tag a video up in a corner above me, that corner, because I'm there. <laughs> Pathetic trying to work that out. I'll tag a video up there for the, when I bought Global X and why I bought into it and why it was more of a income play. Wex Inc. was, again, not paying a dividend. It was a speculative, speculative play in the dip. It did what it needed to do. It increased in value quite dramatically. I then sold out of it to reallocate the capital into dividend payers. Again, I've been through this. Uber, uh, again, absolutely skyrocketed. I feel like I caught that at the, at the right time, as I did with Snap as well, because I've checked Snap more recently. I've also checked Zoom recently that I said I sold out of at the height. And I've gone back and looked at when I sold out of them and we're still not up where they were. So I sold out of these at the perfect time. So sold out of Snap, sold out of my, my positions in Uber at two different dates on the 12th, the 11th and the 12th. So I think I sold out of one when I thought it was at its peak and then, I, and then it went further. So I sold out of that and it has since drawn back, I believe. Someone can look into that for me and, and uh, correct me in the comments below. I then 
put a little bit more money into AGNC, which is a mortgage REIT, and they pay monthly, and a little bit more into royalty income, which again, pay monthly. So things like royalty income, things like the Vanguard index funds, I'll just keep dripping into over time. So that just shows you that if you've got Excel, obviously you can work with this much easier. I, I don't, it's just custom. So let me just come out of that. It gives it to you here, but my one probably small gripe with is IG is that's great. It shows you what they are. And then you've got to scroll over to see the amount and then every time you want to check it, you've got to scroll backwards and forwards. So that could just do with being a little bit smaller. If anyone from IG is watching, make that smaller so you don't need to be scrolling in and out or across left to right when looking at that. So let's get back into the uh, the portfolio. Right, so here's the portfolio. So I'm actually going to run it this time round. So I, I have 49,500 in positions. I have cash ready to go, which will be EV stocks. So imagine the 500 pound that I need to make this up to a £50,000 portfolio, it's going to be EV stocks. So I could just throw that in now if you wanted into something to make it a £550,000 uh, true portfolio, but I'm not going to, so suck it. So I'm going to start from highest to lowest in terms of amount that I've got invested, S&P 500 Vanguard Index Fund. ETFs will be quite high up on here. So S&P 500 ETF, Vanguard Total, didn't mean to open that, Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF are the two biggest holdings, $6,000 and $5,000. We've then got quite a large position, over $3,000 in AT&T. You all know I'm bullish on AT&T and will be for the foreseeable. AG&C, not the best investment decision, has consistently paid me dividends every month, which is good. In fact, I've literally just had AG&C's dividend this month, £16.8p, and which will equate to about 20 bucks. Um, it's now back in the green um, where it was red so I bought into that when it was down still so we've we performed quite well with AG&C um, but that's just it wasn't the best purchase ever but it's paying me on a monthly basis PIMCO I keep clicking on these and opening them apologies PIMCO corporate income and opportunity fund again uh, an income fund really and performing pretty well 20% up since I bought it because I bought it in the dip long-term play hold on to that forever and ever and ever and just receive the dividends on a monthly basis now we get to the the real well-known one so apple don't need to talk about that i've got a nearly three thousand dollar position in apple apple will be something that i'll just consistently buy into over time uh, when i fancy it i have got no qualms about just throwing money into apple at any point almost uh, tesla after the stock split five positions in tesla three thousand dollars so that's good be holding on to that for the long run for sure Vodafone is a mobile phone group in the UK. I've held those for ages, long, long, long time. They've been hit a bit hard since uh, since March and April when everything started going down. So they've been hit pretty hard, but they're a massive mobile phone company in the UK. They pay a really healthy dividend. I'm pretty certain they still are paying the dividend. Yes, they are, by annually. So I'll get a nice big payout from them, about £75 every uh, every six months or so from Vodafone, which is great. 75, it was about 87 last time, which is brilliant. Pfizer has been in the news recently. Uh, it's absolutely saving the world and somehow it's only 11% up. I don't know why or how. I mean, it's only about 10% up for the year and it's, it's literally saving the world. So uh, more investors need to get involved with, with Pfizer. Apple Hospitality REIT, that's another REIT. It's only just, they're only just starting to bounce back. Um, there was lots of REITs I bought a little while ago, including Ventus, including Federals, more recently Iron Mountain, and um, that's just starting to claw its way back, I guess, um, back into the, the positive and, and will be soon. Bank of America, this will be interesting. What's this just done now that Warren Buffett's been given permission to buy up to 25% of it? We get to apply to be able to buy more and, and have a higher position any more than 10% of the company owned by one person or one company. He's just been given permission to own 25% of it. So I thought that would have really jolted the market. But that was very recently, so it's it's not done a great deal. But anyway, Bank of America for the long term. Again, like I explained in my last portfolio review, only reason I bought into Bank of America is because I knew Warren Buffett loved Bank of America and I heard murmurs that he was trying to get permission to, to own more would have been a great holding if the financial sector hadn't had taken such a hit, but it's bouncing back, which is good. 
Enterprise Products Partners held those for a long, long time. They were really hit bad by the the pandemic. They're uh, a gas and oil uh, like pipeline company, uh, but I pay a really healthy dividend and, and the fundamentals were looking pretty good when I bought it. Procter & Gamble, don't need to talk about them really. We all know about Procter & Gamble as we do the likes of Johnson & Johnson, which actually isn't in my portfolio. It's in my fiance and I's trading 212 portfolio, which I will I revealed recently. I'll put a link in the card up there if you wanna have a look at our portfolio, which is much smaller, but it's getting there. Legal in general is a UK stock, uh, hence why the market's now closed on it. Legal in general are financial in the financial sector again, which is why they're still down. I think they're quite heavy in insurance as well. Global X Super Dividend REIT ETF, as I showed you in the history breakdown a second ago, those I've just bought and put uh, £1,200 into those. They're a little bit up, which is fine, and we'll start receiving some dividends from them. That was the whole purpose of these guys. Ventus, as I said, that's the REIT that, again, 15% down still. That's just trying to claw its way back, and I think they're starting to get there because we've got the vaccines. Ultra Group, bit of controversy over Ultra Group, you either like them or you don't, they've been, they're a dividend king, they've been paying their dividend for the last 50 years in a row, or increasing it for the last 50 years in a row, there's no reason why they're going to stop doing that, nothing, nothing says they're going to stop doing that. They're big on e-cigarettes and the cannabis industry, which was legalised in, in Canada, and, and I think they're going to diversify quite a lot. They were obviously a massive cigarette uh, brand, and they own Marlboro cigarettes and, and things like that, but where less and less people are smoking now, they're diversifying and going into e-cigarettes and e-products and CBDs and, and weed, basically, and cannabis. So I think they're going to be fine for the long term and so it was a bit of a speculative play I guess because it is there's a bit of controversy surrounding all true group and of course there's a bit of you know should you own a company that's investing in things that like alcohol and cannabis and cigarettes and things like that for me it's purely a monetary thing um, so I have no issues with it and I sleep absolutely fine at night I can tell you that Vanguard REIT must start uh, buying into uh, spreading across the vanguards so vanguard reit bit less money in that sixteen hundred dollars and it's way up because i bought it right in the dip which was great uh royalty income a reit which i've explained before you know they're, they're going to bounce back they're a monthly payer they are the monthly um the, div the monthly dividend payer i think they've labeled themselves um everybody absolutely loves royalty income as do i reasonable yield uh, nothing to sniff at and again, we'll continually drip into royalty income for the long term. HSBC is just performing appallingly. In fact, yeah, other than those two at the bottom, which weren't just, I don't really want to talk about. Um, HSBC is the worst performing uh, stock in my portfolio. So again, just went into the banking sector. Good, good yield. It had like a 5 or 6% yield when I bought them. Um, and they've just been pummeled. And even since, in fact, let's open it up. Even since... Everything started bouncing back up. That got absolutely pummeled. Small uh, retracement up, pummeled again, and then they've just done nothing but go down basically. And they're, they're starting to recover, but not the best buy ever. But what, what, what are we going to do? You know, nobody saw this coming, and it's the financial sector. But maybe there were problems with them in the first place. Should have uh, researched them further. I'll keep rattling through these because we've got 41 to go through. So a REIT, Iron Mountain, good yield. Bought those in the dip, so they have as a REIT has recovered slightly, which is great. Boeing, real speculative play as soon as all travel was put on uh, on hold. I bought Boeing because they're a great company and I thought they were weather, I knew they would weather the storm, which they well and truly are with 54% up on them, which is great. Federal Royalty uh, Investment Trust. So again, another REIT, bought them in the dip. They've been paying their dividends for, they're an aristocrat as, at a bare minimum. I think they might be a king, I can't remember. But they've been around for a very long time really good really good yield so a safe play in my eyes especially as REITs are now bouncing back and they're one of the biggest ones Walt Disney two minds what to do with Walt Disney at the moment they were paying a good dividend they're now not 50% up in them so they're a good company they will continue to grow I'm sure haven't decided I'm gonna hold on to them if I'm undecided I'll just hold so undecided 
so I'll just hold at the moment. Chimera Investment Corp, an uh, investment company, so again, more of a income play for me, massive yield, uh, nine between nine and 12%, I can't remember exactly, but a huge, huge yield. And so it was literally just, a, I haven't thrown loads into that, uh, we're at $700, so it was just an income play. ExxonMobil, um, I think they're going to, other than the oil uh, industry really, they're big players in the oil, and oil is obviously on tenter hooks at the moment and whether it's going to be needed in the distant future. Exxon's the kind of massive company that will adapt and diversify. So I've got, I've got no issues holding them. I'm probably not gonna buy any more into it, but I've got no issues holding them at the moment and not panic selling out. I think I can be in them for the long term. They've been paying a dividend for a great number of years and they will find a way to uh, to get around any any problems with, with oil. If we now no longer need oil, they'll diversify. And I think they are, I'm sure they're going into the renewable, renewable energy sector more so anyway. So we're uh, gonna be just holding on to them. SPG, Siren Property Group, uh, another REIT. Again, will bounce back or has been. I bought those right in the dip actually, so they have massively. Store Capital Corporation, same thing. Another REIT. EPR Properties, another REIT I bought uh, again in the right in the dip so we've got good profit on that one as well 60 percent up which is great facebook don't need to say anything about facebook bought it in the dip we'll be holding it for the long term faux show it's 83 percent up netflix been selling out of netflix uh for a while now this is my last position and we'll just hold that so see where netflix goes uh Lick and plat uh, industrials i think sector been around for a very long time um, great dividend payer, uh, wanted to get something kind of in the industrial sector anyway. They were one of the biggest players, so it made sense to, to get into that, really. Annelly Capital Management, so again, another REIT, um, and I think diversifying other sort of investment schemes and portfolios as well, actually, but uh, um, up at the moment, which is good. EasyJet, travel, who knows? In fact, interestingly, of EasyJet, if you have a look how far it fell from the from the highs, it came down, it leveled off, I bought there, and it came on going down. <laughs> now, these things happen, don't they? EasyJet, UK airline company, um, one of the budget ones, gonna be around for a long time, I'm sure. You know, they've got stacks of cash. I don't think there's any there's any I've got no I've got no reasons to sell those at the moment for for for, for, for sure. Especially with vaccines coming out. If travel starts to become a thing again, they'll, they'll they'll bounce back absolutely fine. So no qualms in keeping those. Carnival, Carnival being one of the biggest cruise liners, bought it in the dip again, forty eight percent up at the moment. So lots of spec plays here, I know. And again, these 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 ones, I'm not putting a lot into them. So the likes of these REITs, uh, who knew what was going to happen with REITs really. Boeing, there's a little bit more in Boeing, I guess, um, and, and, and a few of the ones up here, but Carnival, EasyJet, and I had things like Caesars. In fact, where's Wynn? I'm sure I'm in Wynn. Maybe I sold out of Wynn. Oh no, it's there. Yeah, so the likes of Wynn Resorts, Carnival, EasyJet, all these kind of real spec plays, and a lot of these REITs that are down here, I was only putting in, These are this is dollars, so for us, I was putting in, uh, what did I put into Win? Oh, I've sold out of Summer Win actually since then, but I haven't Carnival. So I put 200, 200 pounds in, 220 pounds into to Carnival. So we're not talking crazy figures. They're all spec players. I was like, right, what do I, what do I think is probably gonna, whether, whether I need to use a different phrase because I can't say that one. Whether this storm, whether the, 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 the I knew that Carnival were gonna come out the other end. So, well, I was quite confident Carnival were going to come out the other end because they were the biggest cruise liners, you know, a cruise line company, stacks of cash to, to, to get them through. And if anyone was going to start booking with a cruise liner again when they could, you're going to go for top dog. But I wasn't putting loads of money into each one. So that's why these are all down here, all the REITs down here. Ignore things like Facebook and stuff because I've sold out, although Facebook I don't think I have, but some of these I've sold out of the positions more recently but wind resorts caesars i owned that was down here i uh, didn't put loads into that but went up massively so i sold out carnival holding on to whim for the moment so anyway moving on uh the geo group again another reit so still down actually that one bought that probably more recently i think uh, which is why it's probably still down 
Viatrust is the new company that was formed as part of the merger between Upjohn and Mylan that Pfizer owns. Uh, so we got, I got, so depending on what platform you were on, if you were on Trading212 and you owned Pfizer shares, you got a special uh, merger dividend. I think they called it a demerger or something which a lot of people have watched videos on YouTube, uh, they weren't sure what it was, but that's just a special dividend because of the merger. But they didn't get Viatris shares, and I, and I didn't, because I've got a trading 212 portfolio and I've got Pfizer in it. Whereas with IG, I got, I got the equivalent amount that I would have got as part of that dividend payout, but I got it in shares of Viatris which have since they were $136 so they've gone up since so I'm I'm still earning money plus Viatrus I think are soon going to announce a, a pretty healthy dividend so all that's happened is I've added a dividend stock to my portfolio that's going to go up in value and is going to start paying me dividends I mean if you got the if you've got the dividend itself you're only going to do that anyway you, you can invest into another company that's going to go up in value and pay you dividends so it's not like I'm much better off I'm just saying it's weird how one platform would provide you with the shares themselves and another platform would just pay a dividend don't don't know why anyway vanguard um i wonder what vanguard is joking everyone knows vanguard um international high dividend yield which i showed you i bought recently so up a little bit which is good only put a little bit in there but i will just drip feed that and i could do with the other ones room resorts as we as we've just discussed 88 percent up which is great and STM Group and Luckin Coffee, I don't want to talk about at all. So that's the portfolio, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up there because that was long-winded. If there's any position in particular you want to know more about, uh, then do your own bloody homework. No, I'm joking. Pop in a comment uh, down below and we can we can obviously talk about it. Um, but that's the portfolio, that's the wrap up. I'm gonna be spending that thousand pound £1,072 soon on EV stocks. It's all going on EV stocks. I'm going to buy 10, 10 of the better known EV stocks and we're just going to monitor them and see what happens uh, as an experiment, complete experiment, not financial advice, entertainment only. And I'm just going to throw it all into EV stocks and see what happens. So that's the portfolio. I'll kick you out there and I'll wrap the video up. That's it guys, if you're still with us, great. Um, hope that gave you an insight into the portfolio, what I've bought into and, and sold out of, uh, steering the portfolio into income, uh, investing really, uh, income funds and things like that, as uh, I may well have shown you in there. Gonna be doing a little experiment with some EV stocks as well, buying into a load of those, load of those and see how they perform, and that'll be either later on this week or next week, I'll be getting into that with the free funds I've, I've got available there, but we're still getting dividends coming in. A, G, and C as a prime example, and uh, they will be plowing those back into some EV stocks as, as well. So I hope that was help helpful. I hope you've done what you need to do in terms of subscribe to the channel and press the like button, because you need to do that. Pop in the comments below where you're at in your portfolio, what I'm missing in mine, what I need in my portfolio uh, to really complete the portfolio, or whatever else uh, you're in as well that matches mine. So I'd love to hear from you, and we can have a conversation about it. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.